In this question, we have a gallium ion, Ga3+, in its ground state. So our first goal is to figure out how many electrons are in a neutral gallium ion. Okay, so let's find gallium. Here it is. Gallium has 31 electrons because it has an atomic number of 31, which means 31 protons. So in a neutral gallium atom, we also have 31 electrons. Next, it asks how many electrons are in a gallium ion? Gallium 3 plus. 3 plus means it's lost three electrons. If it had 31 to start with and it loses three, it must have 28 because 31 minus three is 28. So we've got 28 electrons in a gallium ion. Okay, final step is to figure out our electron configuration. First, let's draw our electron configuration for a neutral gallium atom, which has 31 electrons. So we're going through, same as every time, our order, following the Aphbile principle, where we write all these out and then we remember the order by drawing our arrows, which show us the order that these get filled in. Okay, so we've got 31 total electrons. The first two are gonna go in the 1s orbital, in the 1s subshell, so that's 1s2. The next two electrons are gonna go in 2s, so 2s2. The next six will go in 2p, so that's 10 in total. We still need to get to 31 for our neutral atom. Next, we have 3s, which can fit up to 2. Next, we have 3p, which can fit up to 6. Let's see, how many have we got so far? We've got 18 electrons in total so far. We need to get to 31. Okay, now looking at our diagram, we might think 3d comes next, but remember, we're following the arrows, not the rows. So 4s is actually next. 4s can fit up to 2 electrons. So we've got a total of 20 electrons now. We still need to get to 31. After 4s, we fill 3d. 3d can fill up to 10. So it's gonna be 3d. We've got 11 electrons left to fill, so it's gonna be 3d10. Finally, we have one electron left, which is gonna go in our 4p subshell or sublevel. Okay, so there's our complete electron configuration for a neutral gallium ion, or neutral gallium atom, sorry. Okay, the question's asking is about a gallium three plus ion. So we know it's gonna lose three electrons. And you might think, oh, well, it's just gonna lose them from 4p, one from there, and then it's gonna lose two from the 3d. So you might think the end of this might be 3d8, since it lost one from 4b and two from 3d. However, that's not actually how it works. We find that even though the 3d10 gets filled first before the 4p gets filled, when we're removing electrons, they come from the outer energy levels, the valence electrons first. So we're gonna find that actually, one electron comes from our 4p subshell and then the two more electrons that come out are gonna come from a 4s subshell. So we're actually left with 3d10, that being a full uh, energy sublevel, and the 4s2 and 4p1, those are going to be empty. This turns out to be a more stable electron configuration than if we remove them from the 3d10. So that looks slightly different than you might expect because they don't actually uh, get taken out, the electrons, when we form an ion, the same way that they might fill up. They actually get removed from the valence shells first. So now we're filling out our electron configuration. Up to 3p6, they've written out for us. Then we had 4s2, which is actually gonna be 4s0, it's empty for our ion. So 4s is gonna be empty. Then the 3d, we had full with 3d10. 4p, that was then empty. 
and then the rest are also going to be empty. So that's the important thing to remember when you're thinking about ions and electron configuration. We actually remove electrons when we're forming an ion from the highest uh, valence shell first. We don't start taking them out of a lower um, overall energy level, such as 3D, until we've already removed them from energy level 4, from the 4S and the 4P.